A Dr. Beza? Who had a birthday? Oh, mine, actually. Last week, you missed a great party. You're 37? Yes. I was conceived during the big blackout of 1965. Would you excuse me? to work on our not embarrassing Sharona skills. 37. What? He's 37. S so what? If he's 37 years old, then I know how the judge was killed. Did you get the red dress I sent you? Well, that's the idea, sweetheart. It's Captain Stottlemyre. Hello, Mr. Biderbeck. Captain, I really wish you would have called. I'm a little busy at the moment. I'm here to arrest you for the murder of Judge Kate Lavinio. That's a warrant, duly sworn. Sweetheart, I'm gonna have to call you back. Doctor, will you call Howard Klein and tell him we're suing the city for malicious prosecution again? I have hired a local construction company to take out this door. We're gonna get a crane in here and lower your fat ass down to the street. A crane? Oh, that's rich. But would you mind explaining to me how I'm supposed to have killed the bitch? I can't leave this room, remember? Mr. Monk! Well, my, 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 it's the defective detective once more. Lay it on me, Einstein. These two chairs are from the judge's house. The killer stood on one of them when he turned off the smoke alarm. A girl in the neighborhood saw, quote, a very, very fat man standing on it. But there's something funny about the chair. It's not broken. This is Sergeant Cargill from the 14th Precinct. Sergeant, how much do you weigh? 265. Would you mind? So how could a very, very fat man have stood on it? There's only one explanation. He was a fat man, but not a heavy man. Lieutenant. I visited your clinic today and borrowed one of your empathy suits. Fat, but not heavy. I believe we have another warrant to serve. You're joking. You were in it together. You killed her. The fat man planned it, but you did it. It was brilliant. You killed her. And then you left clues behind to make it look like Biderbeck did it. Why? Because he's the only person on earth who couldn't possibly have done it. You wore enormous boots to leave big footprints. Breaking in was no problem. The housekeeper told you about the hide key. I admit I was confused until I figured out the sequence of events. First, you killed the judge. <coughs> then. You ransacked the house. Of course, you needed a witness. You put on one of your fat suits, set off the alarm, and then waited until you were sure somebody was watching. And finally, you called 911. And you're great with voices, Doc. We've all heard you. Biderbeck even supplied you with videotapes of the judge so you could practice. This is insane. Why would I risk everything? Well, you really didn't have a choice, did you, Glenn? I knew Christiane wasn't your real name as soon as you said you were 37 years old. You told Sharona that you were named after Christiane Barnard, but he wasn't famous until 1967, after you were born. I put the FBI on it. They were looking for you. Your real name is Glenn Q. Sindel. You killed a child five years ago. Accident. You were operating on her so doped up you couldn't see straight. 
accident. Convicted of manslaughter and reckless endangerment. You were looking at 15 years minimum. You jumped bail before sentencing, and then you disappeared. Until now. And somehow, somehow, Beiderbeck learned your secret, and from that moment on, he owned you, didn't he? Listen, I, I just have to say, fantastic work, really. Both of you, kudos. And, and for the record, I am shocked, shocked that my personal physician is both a fugitive and a cold-blooded killer, shocked. But you can't really tie me to the crime, can you? Well, now that really depends on Mr. Sindel. What do you say, Glenn? Would you like to talk to us? It will be my pleasure. I'm looking forward to testifying against you. Maybe once and for all I can redeem myself for everything I've done. All the pain I've caused. I detest you. Do you? With every fiber of my being. Fighter back, you're an abomination. An odious, gluttonous, yeah, yeah. putrid freak of nature. Wow, it's been a long time since anyone's called me that. Listen, by the time my lawyers are through with you, you're not gonna know which end is up. There's not a prison in the country that can hold me. There are very few shopping malls that can hold you. But nonetheless, we're gonna give it a try. Jump! What's he doing? I think he's trying to kill me. Wasn't really much of a fight, was it? It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle out there.